What is going on guys? So I don't have my vlog ones on. Before we get in the video, this is a different type of video. I have not done one of these more informational videos in a minute. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Offline dropping their limited flavor. And this is on everything I love, the best flavored pre I've ever had from them. It's a blood orange pineapple Patriot Punch. They have the stem version, which is the high stem supreme, and they have the non-stem, only the pump uh dropping on. I think it's Sunday. Um but yeah, without further ado, let's get in the video. Let me know if you guys like it what is going on guys so today i wanted to go over a little bit more of a informational type of video explaining exactly how i go about growing my chest again i'm not like a registered cpt whatever it is and i obviously like i'm not a competitive bodybuilder builder whatever it is so i don't i don't have exact qualifications to give you guys advice on building a physique i know people are going to be like yo like who are you to tell anybody what to do in the gym um, but this is how I have built my chest and what I would do if somebody asked me, Hey, Alex, how do you grow your chest? Can you give me some tips and pointers? This is exactly what I would go and exact, you know, kind of say, so, um, yeah, so we're just gonna get into it. So I'm filming mm -hmm. a chest and shoulder workout here today. And I'm just gonna go over all the tips and stuff that I kind of went over to build my chest. Obviously it's like probably the highlight of my physique. It's very full and round. Now, of course, part of that is genetics, but another part I would say is I've always trained my chest pretty 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 well i've always had a really good mind muscle connection with it and i feel like that's why it's grown so much so which is obviously one of the first things i'm going to talk about is developing that mind muscle connection so one of the ways that i've always been able to do that is doing this thing called the pre-exhaustion method so i've done this in like a lot of my videos i've talked about it basically what you do is you pick an isolation movement you know a lot of people when they go into the gym and they start working out the chest it's like hey like let's do a heavy bench press they start off with like a flat bench heavy try to pr whatever it is and they end up not feeling it in their chest they feel it in their shoulders or whatever it may be so by pre-exhausting doing an isolation movement like a pec deck fly first or doing a cable fly first or a dumbbell fly first you get a pump in your chest first so that when you go into your next movement which is your heavier compound lift your chest is going to fatigue before your shoulders or your triceps fatigue and you'll feel it a lot more in your chest honestly your pump will be 10 times better if i go and i do a flat bench press when i start when i go into the gym and i do that for four sets of 12 whatever versus if i go in do four sets of 12 on a pec deck then four sets of 12 on a flat bench press you will feel your chest so much more pumped up um, if you do the pec deck first the bad part about this is yeah you won't be able to lift as much because you already are you know fatiguing your muscle fibers a little bit by doing that isolation movement first but you will feel it way more so the, so the way i go about this is i train my chest usually twice per week so one of those days of the week i would choose to use the pre-exhaustion method so that it's more of a volume focused day uh in the gym for me a lot more reps and sets for my chest versus the second day of the week i'll focus more on a heavier type of thing where i will not do the pre-exhaustion method and i will go right into my bench press um, to work more on that mechanical tension increasing you know progressive overload and stuff like that uh, so that's how i kind of offset that that issue um but it definitely helps develop a better mind muscle connection when you already have blood flow in that area next thing what i want to talk about is going to be like kind of the you know exercise selection when it comes to chest so for me i was always really big on using a lot more dumbbells than barbell recently i'm doing more barbell just because it's more fun because i've already developed my chest i'm not focusing on building it but for the longest time all i did was really dumbbell lifts a lot of the time a lot of incline dumbbell presses i definitely prioritized incline movements uh, or I would do a lot of uh, plate loaded presses and the reason why I did dumbbell or plate loaded presses is because you have equal load on each arm versus on a bench press if you have one stronger arm than the other or one arm is a little bit tighter than the other you could have a, a little bit of an imbalance issue so for me doing the dumbbells or the plate loaded presses you kind of avoid that issue of creating an imbalance because you're pushing equal load on each arm so that's why I enjoy using both of those also dumbbells especially plate loaded presses you can kind of control the aspect of your intensity a little bit better um so i 100 percent recommend putting at least one plate loaded exercise in your chest days because let's you can do drop sets 10 times more easier you can do partial reps 10 times more easier and a lot safer so i can go to failure um and this kind of goes into the whole aspect of intensity i, I love training with intensity especially when it comes to my chest and what i mean by training you know having intensity is is going to failure if anything past failure so on a lot of these uh I'll, like when i do like the plate loaded movements or dumbbell movements is I'll, I'll push to as many reps as i can um for the last working set i'll usually do a one one or two warm-up sets where i kind of go a, a little bit you know shy of failure and then the last set i usually go all the way to failure and then i'll do partial reps and then sometimes i'll have a workout partner kind of help me get a few extra reps in even after failure or i'll do a drop set to try to you know get even more and more volume out of the out of my muscles so I highly recommend using drop sets and like different intensity techniques like that or force reps or pause reps or uh, i mean not pause reps um half reps partial reps uh, to your advantage to kind of increase the uh output just a little bit more rather than your typical 
you know, four sets of eight or four sets of 12, whatever it may be. Uh, another thing I've always been big on is I train very instinctively. So uh, I kind of hop around the gym. If I'm doing, I don't really have a laid out program all the time. If I, if I'm doing an exercise, like I go to a new gym and I see a plate loader press and I don't feel it in my chest at all. I'm getting like a shoulder pump. I will, I will do only one set and I'll hop off the machine and do something different. Or if I find a machine I like a lot, uh, maybe I'll stay at it for six sets instead of like three or four. So I'm very instinctively, tra I train based on kind of how I feel. Whatever feels good is kind of how I, how I lift. That's how I've done it. Again, I'm not a registered CPT, whatever. You don't even have to listen to me. And like, obviously my information might not be valid to like everybody, but this is what has worked for me. So obviously I'm going to explain kind of what works for me. So I, I work, I train very instinctively. I don't really count my reps or anything. I kind of just train. I mean, if I had to give an idea of my, the rep range I'm in, um, for my heavier mass movements, I'll probably stay around the six to eight range. And then for my, you know, rest of the workout, I, I probably go up 12 to 15, 10 to 15, most likely. In terms of like volume, I'd say now I only do two, two uh, exercises for my chest, probably around four sets if I had to say each. But before when I was really trying to build it, I would pick three to four exercises, um, usually two presses and two flies. And I would do probably three to four working sets for each one. Obviously that's a lot more volume. You don't need to do that, especially as a beginning or, or a beginning lifter. That's just kind of what I did because I did a lot more volume back when I first started working out. Another thing that I probably wanted to wanted to touch on was, you know, we're making sure again, this kind of goes back to the pre-exhaustion thing, but you can, you never want your shoulders to overpower your chest. Uh, I hear too many times people say how oh, that they're benching, they're lifting and like they just they're not able to get, like I said, the good mus muscle connection in the chest and they just feel a lot of the, uh, the exercise in the shoulders, which is, which is, again, really, really common. Just people don't know how to use their chest and they end up using the shoulders more than anything. Um, so again, whenever you're doing your pressing movements, make sure your shoulders are back and down. The pre-exhaustion method definitely helps out a lot with this. You never want your, want your shoulders to creep forward in any movement. Um, obviously when you're doing a lot of incline movements, so you might feel a little bit of a pump in your front delt, delt and that's perfectly fine. You're still working your chest. But again, like, I don't know the way I've always explained it when I do any like chest movement, whether it's a fly or a press is like, I try to just act like I want to bring my elbows together in every, in any movement, shoulders back and down, just trying to make my elbows almost connect. And that really, you know, helps fire and activate my, my chest quite a bit. One thing I've also realized that helps kind of with activating your chest more is like flexing between sets. Um, which is where I'll just kind of do a static hold, you know, flexing my chest as hard as I can for five to 10 seconds between sets gets like the pump going, gets my blood, blood flowing in there a little bit more. Again, a lot of this shit, bro, is, is just straight up bro science. I'm, I'm going to be straight honest with you. So don't take this scientifically, scientifically word for word. I'm not Jeff Nippard, but yeah, that's honestly all the tips I could, you know, pretty much say when it comes to my chest. Yeah. Some of it's genetics. If you have a gap in your chest, for example, that is literally your insertion. You cannot fill that gap up no matter how much you try. I have a very full chest and it's very like round. That's just from, again, from genetics and just years of, of doing a bunch of bench pressing and bunch of flies. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If I had to pick like a top few exercises to do though, which you should always include in your program, it's going to be incline dumbbell press. It's going to be a, a flat, like a flat hammer press or a decline hammer press and then uh, a dumbbell fly okay a lot of people don't do dumbbell flies anymore and then also dips okay people sleep on dips weighted dips are amazing especially for your lower chest so yeah that's a top that's that's four that's four top exercises i would include in all of them um but that's it yeah hope you guys enjoyed um one of these more you know informational style videos if you want to know what I, I guess for some shoulder tips maybe i'll make that another one basically shoulders lateral raises lateral raises lateral raises that's all i do um, but yeah, let me know if you guys want to see any more of these. Let me know a different muscle group you guys want me to do. Uh, I want to, you know, expand, change up my YouTube content a little bit where I hit all audiences where we'll hit the vlogs, we'll hit the informational content. We'll hit like, you know, all, all everything, single aspect of any type of possible fitness content. So I used to do these when I first started my YouTube channel. So if you know, you guys are new to this or been with me for the last year and haven't seen one of these for a minute, uh, I used to do these types of informational videos, just, you know, doing a little voiceover. So if you guys enjoyed it, if you did, please leave a like comment and subscribe. I have no idea if I'm going to vlog in the rest of this video or not, but this is just the voiceover part. So deuces. All right, so we just finished up the workout, chest and shoulders. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of tips to how it goes when I train mine to grow my chest. I did a, definitely a lot more chest volume than I'm used to. I usually only pick two exercises for chest, but I wanted to show you guys what I did to kind of build it. Now I'm just kind of maintaining it because obviously it's my best body part. So there's no point in me going crazy with it. I really want my shoulders to catch up to it as well as my back so that I can really match it. 
Just got some posing done in the exile posing room. Again, we're meeting up here on the 16th of July, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come pull up if you want to meet me in person. Feeling a little bit, a little bit fluffy. We haven't really been dieting at all. I line myself to eat a lot more. We're up in weight right now currently. Oh, Steve's calling. All right, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna vlog a little bit the rest of the day. All right, guys, so we're looking at another townhouse. The one in Canton, the one we showed in probably the last video, is not probably gonna go through. So we're looking at a different one closer to my home where I live now. So yeah, I'll show you guys it. So this is the bottom floor when you walk in, entrance right there. Better as you go up, little bathroom here. Oh, this is nice. This is solid. I don't know if I'm rocking with the color of the wall, but we can show you. There's the porch. I like gray. I agree. With the green, yeah, I ain't rocking. What is, who, th who thought this was the right decision to do? They need help. This is good though, good space. Nice little kitchen. Double oven. This is cool. Small little room. Bro, again, what are these colors of the walls? What are, what are they doing here? We got two different shades of blue. That's purple. I mean purple and then we got blue. They color coded the rooms. Nice little bathroom, bathtub. This is the master. This is a good size. Got a little bathtub, got the jets in that bitch. This is a good size. That's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, if you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notification on so you guys are always up to date when I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, so yeah, moving into a new townhouse. I'll show you guys that um, the update probably in one of the next videos. Also, let me know again, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys like this style of video, let me know and I can do it on other muscle groups, do a little bit more informational content. Again, I upload three times per week, so I feel like we... We have enough content to where it doesn't have to always be vlog day in the life content. It can be like other stuff like this one. So let me know if you guys enjoyed it. I try to put as much information because obviously everybody always asks like, Alex, how do you grow chest? What do you do? Um, so yeah, that's that's what I, that's what I do. Code Alex, Alpha Lion. Um, I'm with Celsius, Flex Pro. If you want to show love on all, all the sponsors that are down below in the description. Workout app, meal plans, all that good stuff, merch. Pretty sure that's it. Again, new flavor from Alpha Line, pre-workout of the month dropping. I believe it is on Sunday. The Blood Orange Pineapple, smacking, really good. Uh, that's it. All right, love you guys. Till next time. Peace out.